What's going on guys? G2 here. Welcome back to the bench. And this video is in response to a lot of requests I've gotten. So uh, we did a video showing, you know, how to refurbish um, old vintage ping putters like this one here. This is a answer. And, uh, you know, kind of brought it back to life, got some polish on it, uh, make it look really nice. Uh, but what you guys wanted to know is kind of like the embellishments and all these kind of things on here as well. How did I do that? And that's what this video is going to go over. The face was milled. We're not going to go into that because this was actually outsourced. I didn't do the milling myself. Uh, but everything else you can pretty much do on your own. So let's get into it. <laughs> So as our piece that we're going to do today, this is a Ping Pal putter. Uh, I went through the other process of polishing it off and cleaning it and it looks great, right? It would be fine just the way it is right now. But what we're going to do is we're going to do um, some file work on this top line here. And you'll see it's not hard. It's time consuming and you just kind of have to think it out. If you go to YouTube, which you're already on, you can go and look at um, knife making file work. So this is essentially the same thing that you would do on a knife, you know, to file the, the, uh, the spine of the knife. And you can find out the certain ways and patterns to do uh, all different variations. So for example, just very, very briefly, this pattern here, this kind of serrated rope style top, it's really just one file used two ways, right? So we filed this side going up at a 45, and then we filed the other side going this way at maybe a 30. So it gives you kind of that rope serration look on it. It's really that simple. So you could do whatever you want um, the patterns really are are up to you and and kind of where you want to go with it uh, but we're gonna do one that's almost like a tribal style pattern on this and the one thing that's gonna make this one unique is this already has a center line on it here uh, and we don't want to really ruin that so we kind of want to integrate that center line into our pattern to try to illustrate this for y'all um, these are the three that I have kind of worked with. Um, so we've got our Celtic knot pattern here, our barbed wire, I call it, and then the rope. So the rope is this one. It's the one that's on the ping. You can see how they're basically just off-centered. You're looking at the reverse image. So you're taking out material. So what is going to show is this pattern. See that black line and if you look at it very similar to the top line of the putter makes sense so you're looking at the reverse image um, the Celtic knot is not hard to do um, but we also have to think about this alignment part here because it's gonna fall somewhere in this pattern and it's it's hard to line it up it may look good it may not look good and unfortunately you only really get one shot at this so I think for the purposes of this and our alignment piece the barbed wire is going to be the best because it allows us to have areas that are flat I think if we if we do it right we can put like an alignment the alignment would be there uh, so that's the orientation we're looking for okay so how do we start? So the first thing that I do is I'll get my Sharpie and I will just black in the top of the putter here. So just like that. So I have a nice black line, right? So we can see where we're going to score 
and make our marks because you, you only get one shot at this. So you got to make sure that you get it right the first time. Looking at our barbed wire pattern, these are pretty large kind of gouges that we're going to be doing here. Um, and they're alternating. So I want to find the biggest file that I have in a round to gouge out that material. If you want to eyeball this, you can eyeball it. I'm more of a try to be somewhat precise with this. So we will take the measurement of our rasp like so. We've got that right there. So we know that we can, we know this is going to be the middle for one, all right? So you can see, hopefully, those lines. So that line reflects the center of each one of those lines is one of our rasp lines. So for this first one right here, right, it's going to be on there and next and next and next. So that's how we do it. We broke it down into segments. All right, so before we start, I just wanted to make sure that I got all my marks aligned. So you'll see, we have two lines. We have our long lines right here, every eight millimeters or so, let's say, right? And then we have our hash. So I have a hash up top. I don't have one here because our center is actually our alignment part. Then I have up here, down there, up here, down there, up here, down there. And that is just the bisection of those individual lines. So what this is showing me is, on this section, I am going to file this way, and then this way, and then this way, and then that way, etc., and move on. So that's how we're going to do it. I've always found that it's easier to start um, from a pilot hole or a pilot mark. So what I'll do is I'll take a little triangular rasp here, and I am just going to mark that area that I'm going to set in. This will ensure that when I come out here with the big rasp, I'll be able to center myself um, right in there. Now you can also use a Dremel. So if you want to just get a Dremel with a cutoff wheel. So this just makes it a little bit easier. And you just are going to base it just a very nick, just a nick, a boom, center, 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 just to give yourself a starting point. Um, other thing with ping, this is the disclaimer, right? So there is evidence of according to California that, um, manipulating this material that these putters are made off could be hazardous to your health. Um, so I would suggest one, we're going to put some, um, gloves on and also use a respirator just to be safe. If you're, you know, a hardened iron worker you're probably going to be fine. Okay, so we've got our little marks. Now you can see where we're talking about. So wherever there's a mark, that's where we're going to take our gouge. Basically, we're just going to go right at this. Now, I always like to go for this particular pattern. We want to gouge at least to the center line of... Our, our piece. So we're going to take it just about to the middle. But we want to get it. You can see here we're just about to the middle there. So now I want to do is just make it a little bit deeper in the front. Okay. That's about as deep as I would want to go on this. You can see just on the front how much we've come off. Okay. So just try to match all of the same. All right. So here we go. So we've got our first sets done. 
alternating side there's our right here our center alignment doesn't look like much now but this process is interesting because it kind of reveals itself not until the end so you kind of have to trust it so let's go into what the next step is so according to our diagram here right so we've taken out our alternating chunks now what we have to do is on each side of our alternating chunk we are going to do an angled cut just like so so we're going to have these angled cuts and you can see here how it's going to start to form it's hard to tell but a kind of a serpentine pattern so that's kind of the pattern we can do you can see on each one of those alternating spots we've got two lines that basically outline each section so you can hand file this I'm gonna go easy to be honest and I'm just gonna use um, our Dremel cutoff wheel but if you want to go old school just grab yourself a triangle file and just hit on the inside of each one of our curves just knock off that edge okay and we're just gonna grab this and at every corner knock here knock here knock here knock here 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 so go down the line All right, so we have gone ahead and put those in and maybe you can see the pattern developing here. So um, <clears throat> we've got our notches. We have our slit at each notch angled in the direction of the respective notch. Now, all we need to do to finish this up is on each one of our cutouts right so here's our cutout we need to smoothen the transition here so we kind of want to make it almost like an S like a wave pattern so what that means is from this notch to this notch we just want to soften this edge and get rid of these sharp edges here uh, all you're going to need to do that is just a straight file and it should be easy because you know you get the file the same width as your notches and just we're just going to knock out those edges and then we'll polish everything up and we'll uh, show you what it looks like. All right, so we're all done. So here we go. Just polished it up. You can see. It's got a nice engraved filed whatever you want to call it um top to it and it's not hard guys you just have to understand the basic principles alternating on either side and just go after it really the only part on this that i'm not typically fond of is right here where the alignment is but i think what i'm going to do is i'm probably maybe just dig that out a hair more and color it black or something but um when you're looking down on it it looks sharp that's how you do it the technique is absolutely identical alternating files on either side right so we're going this way and that way 
all we did on this one compared to this one is angled it. These are straight on 90 degrees. These are angled. And you can see how different of a result you get. So I just say, you know what, guys? Just go out. Have fun with it. Go for it. It's not hard. No fear. Until next time, G2 out.